Okay, so welcome everybody. This is the customer commun communication webinar. Um, quite a few of you I may have spoken to already and sort of gone through some of these plans, so it might be repetitive, but this was a good way to sort of bring it all together and inform those who haven't sort of had that, that chat with me as to what we can do for your customer communication with the smart water metering programs in particularly. Um, so I am the marketing and communications manager here at Taggle, and I'm here to sort of assist you as you need. So um, please do use, come and ask me any questions after the webinar if you like, um, but I'll go through that a little bit later. Um, so um, yes, so using the Q&A sort of um, the window there, that would be preferred. And I'll check back there every now and then, ask questions as we go through or at the end works as well. Um, oops, go ahead. The upcoming webinars next month, I haven't confirmed who's speaking and what the topic will be, but it will be on the 4th of November. Um, timing wise, we might stick it to the 3 p.m. Sydney time. So that would be 2 p.m. in Queensland. If this doesn't work for you, please, do send us an email so we can get some feedback as to what would be a preferable time. Cool. Let's get into it. So water and its place in the community. So there's sort of two, two columns that I believe um, that our community sits within. They either have sort of no idea about the water issues or water has a large impact on their livelihood and lifestyle. So, the no idea about water issues might be more your urban or coastal, I'm used to doing that, <laughs> urban or coastal communities. Um, water appears to be plentiful and they're unaware of the cost to treat and deliver it. Um, and they use the water without thinking too much about the process of how it reaches their taps. Um, from the other side, water is a, has a large impact on their livelihood and lifestyle. So that would be your rural inland communities and businesses where the water is scarce, more valuable, um, might cost them a little bit more. They use the water mindfully and their livelihood may depend on it and lifestyle is affected by its abundance. So these two different types might need different messaging and how we approach it. Um, the opportunities that are presented by smart metering projects, um, it can be more than just what smart metering is about. There's, there's a lot more that we can educate people on here and use, use the tools. So educating the public about water rather than simply please use less. Um, I do believe that the community is interested in knowing more about water use and the sustainability and long-term effects of the environment, particularly those who are more affected by it. But generally the population, I believe, could be better educated than please use less of it. Um, present the council as a leader in keeping up with the latest infrastructure and technology. Um, this sort of brings the idea of how to present your council as, as a leader. And with the smart water metering projects, um, this can be a tool for that, um, as it is something that's right down into the house of every user. So it's a great way to touch base with the community. Um, demonstrating that working towards sustainability goals and reducing environmental impact. Um, that's a great hot topic at the moment. Um, we're lucky coming into a more rainy season this year, but it is something that's on the front of people's mind and a great sort of way to lead, lead a conversation. Um, and then improve customer engagement and satisfaction. We've had a lot of great feedback from when customers do get those leak notifications and they've been monitoring their water, that they're more engaged, they're happier with the council or the water utility and better energy is then created within the community towards the council. They believe we're doing a good job. So having an action plan. Um, you wanna have your goals. The goals might set the key messages. You wanna look at different community segments and a timeline of activities, depending on where you are at in your project. So some goals. Every council utility is different with varying challenges. So just taking a look at a 
map of our customers and where, where we have rollouts. Some of these might be trials, but most of these are full rollouts. Um, and you can see they would have so many different challenges depending on your, your local water supply, so many different things. So we do need to sort of look at this council by council. So I want to say that this is kind of just general, general advice, but yeah, we'll break it down a little bit. So setting some goals to drive your messaging and provide guidance. Um, so promoting the benefits of smart water meters and how they work, that would be a goal. Um, the benefits are pretty good. So using the benefits to target your messaging, educating the community as to how to use the customer portal. That could be a, a good goal in messaging. Um, build customer confidence, reduce water consumption, and reduce the number of concealed leaks and rebates. So using all of these goals to then build the messages on top of them. Um, we'll give some ideas. Okay, those key messages. So based off the goals, detect leaks quickly and be notified of high consumption alerts. Um, monitor water usage quickly and easily. So these are, I'm thinking of these in terms of creating articles, newsletter headlines, um, messages that you would put in your billing, um, targeting these specific monitoring your usage at the time that they would be looking at their bills. Um, inform the community where the funding came from and how quickly the technology pays itself off in water savings to build confidence in it and being money well spent. So a couple of, not gonna name too many names around here, but um, a couple of our customers have experienced quite quick payoffs and that does definitely worth mentioning that. Um, by letting your community know that it's a valuable product, um, product and project, there might be less questioning about it. Um, and by different councils sort of putting this information forward, it will help each other in building this confidence around the projects too. Um, demonstrate how... Oh, sorry. No, I've lost it. Here we go. Um, demonstrate how water services will be improved. So more information from data to answer customer queries. So now when your customers call up your customer service, you've got more information to provide solutions with. So um, demonstrating this, putting it in messaging, and then obviously when your customer service are talking to people, getting them to log into their customer portal and then sharing that with their neighbors, friends, that that information is readily available for them and free um, can be quite valuable just encouraging that conversation. Um, share network averages to inform community how their consumption is tracking and improve engagement. So that's working as a community as a whole, because um, you get your network averages, and that might sort of be a great way to inform them as to what the water situation is. So after high rainfall, that the water use has gone down, if it's a particularly hot week, how much the water has gone up so that people can then be mindful of watering in the evenings or at certain times. Um, but then if you are avoiding peak times, maybe after, because if you are hitting the top of what you're capable of delivering, then you might want to target your messages around those challenges. Okay, so community segments. Um, different groups have may have different strategies, including different segments within the communication plan. So you might want to target your messaging differently or go about how you would get in contact with these different customer groups. So residential, that's sort of a big one with your widespread media. Your top 100 water users might be one-on-one, -on -one, um, discussions with them or information sort of nights with them. Large businesses, small businesses, large properties, rural customers, you might find them at sort of different events, schools, whether you target the, the actual schools to check whether they have 
leaks and making sure that they're on top of their water usage or any problems, but then also educating within the schools. So letting the kids know that these programs are available at their own houses and teaching them how to use it. And then hopefully they go home and show their parents too. Um, In-house, so within parks and gardens, pools, council buildings, ensuring that you're definitely getting the best use out of your products, so your projects internally. Um, so what the messaging would be and how you would target that. Is it in-house emails? Is it um, training? There are different avenues here that we can look at and get ideas from. So timeline of activities. Um, so number one, awareness. So when you first go ahead with the project or even just looking into it, the initial announcement, addressing the why. So if the community understands the need for it, then they might be more on board to go along with it and not put as, as many negative comments around. But negative, the negativity generally comes from the, the smaller percentage. It's just unfortunate that they're a bit louder. Um, but yeah, definitely having those initial announcements will make it sort of less of a surprise for the community. Um, educating staff so that they're aware of the project and if their friends and families ask about the projects, they're aware. So again, internal emails, training, fact sheets, um, ensuring that the benefits that will be seen are sort of advertised and that everything's done with positivity. Um, it's something that the community needs because of the aging infrastructure or whatever the challenge is, just pushing that, that message. So on the right hand side there, I've got the, the different ways to go about this. So your internal emails, training, media releases, website fact sheets, social media posts, local media outlets, news, message from the mayor. They're always well received. So pre-installation. Um, when the installation will commence, um, timeline and locations, what can be expected, how the system will work in form of customer portal and that it is coming. So these are the sort of messages that you wanna get out um, and how you could go about that would be your mail outs, media releases, um, informing of the timeline and locations that these will be happening and when it will be happening and how the system will work. So it's definitely that, that point at which you're educating the community as to it's going ahead and this is how it will happen. Um, during installation, having updates of progress, initial findings, start notifying customers with leaks, good news stories, letters in mailbox when installation is completed, internally launch customer portal to test and build internal confidence. Um, this could all be done through your media releases, timeline and location updates, notify identified high leaks, um, and that could be by call or mail, depending on how many you have. You've had feedback from different customers as to which they prefer. The call is definitely more personal if it's a smaller number, uh, especially for those higher leaks. Um, otherwise, doing a mail out of them. Social media updates and news stories on progress. Um, no questions so far? Keep going. Customer portal launch. So educating the community that the customer portal is up and running, um, share some of the leak numbers, notify customers with leaks and inform them how to check their usage via the portal, educate on features within the portal. So that again, through media releases, video content can be particularly helpful here so that they can see how easy the portal is to use and how to sign up to it. Um, stands at shows, shopping centers, again, just to demonstrate how simple it is and that it's free and encouraging people to sign up. Um, notifying those with high leaks, again, the call and mail, and while you're on the phone, getting them to sign up. Um, social media updates and advertising during the billing process. So within the billing process is kind of a good one because they might be surprised at their water usage and be questioning it. So having something there saying that they can see exactly what their water usage is and monitor where the high usage activities are can be quite valuable. And then ongoing. So a couple of years down the track, you don't 
really want to fall off it, off the bandwagon, you can still sort of promote the portal um, by encouraging signups, educating about the local water use patterns, challenge the community to change one behavior and see if it makes a difference to their consumption so that the way they're checking in regularly. Um, and again, through the billing, social media updates and leak letters to include sign-up details. So most of these within the timeline have be aimed, been aimed at um, your residential. So I would go back to all the different segments and look at the different timelines and how you can address them. Yeah, it's just looking at these is a little bit too narrow um, for all the different segments. Here I'll go into a few examples and ideas. Um, so I do have for our existing customers, I do have resources. I have a folder with examples, ideas and timelines. So please do get in touch with me if you don't have that already. Happy to go through it all with you and go into some of the examples and ideas a little bit more because I have quite a few of them and would like to see some more if anyone has them. We haven't spoken to, so fact sheets. Um, and from our existing customers here, you might see some of the work that you've done because um, yeah, I've just pulled it from existing things that are out and about. So fact sheets, um, pretty valuable, having a couple of pages worth of information that you can put out to the community to educate. Um, these should be on the website as brochures can be used in a couple of different places. But definitely one of the must have items, I would say. Um, announcements, so different ideas as to how to go about, about announcing. So your message from the mayor, different articles, but always encouraging that positive reinforcement as to why you're going about the project. Um, again, website. So here I've chosen two that I thought were pretty good in terms of having, you've got, if you can see my mouse on this side, you've got all the different fact sheets, notices, then your frequently asked questions, your latest press releases, and then a bit of information. And then a video here discussing the project, which I think was pretty well done. Um, the same here with Logan, um, some contact details, pretty good and key dates within the project. Um, helps everyone feel a bit more informed as to what is going on. Um, social media, so having a range of different posts, so it's interesting and engaging. Um, you will get a lot more of the keyboard bashes on social media. They like to have a whinge. They have a whinge about anything and everything. Um, so having a policy in place as to how to deal with them. Do you respond? Do you answer the questions? Do you point them in the direction of the fact sheets? Um, I do encourage that, but then also being a little bit restrained so that they don't sort of get a little bit out of control. Um, not arguing with the, with the local community, but depending how the project is going and what the initial sort of attitude to water in the area is, will sort of depend as well as to how much of that you get. Um, some more examples of social media. Um, so sharing where you're at to. So Hinch and Brooks, this was fantastic. Um, although this isn't the one. Um, how they're showing the, the progress. So they've had quite a few updates along the way, which has been great to keep the community engaged and on top of it. Uh, and Dubbo too, that's a nice, nice image and lots of information be going out from them as to the project. Um, positive news stories um, all along the way so that putting actual figures within it um, definitely helps so that the community starts to get a grasp as to what what's happening and how much is actually being saved along the way. Um, reminders during billing so not just within the billing paperwork that goes out but across sort of your news and social media as well at that time using it as an opportunity to communicate. Um, I 
yeah, building trust in the council. So we want to, we want the community to think of the council as doing a good job, which we hopefully are doing a good job, but we do want to talk about the wins. So whether it's showing the changes in the culture of water, showing the results by the tariffs remaining the same, um, and even awards. So happy to help with awards as well. So if you do have some good results, then definitely worth talking about it. Um, and yeah, educating the public. So Makai has got recently put out a nice little video, which was sort of educating the public how to check their water usage with the mention of their customer portal as well. Um, and then these are all videos. Um, you can have a look at them on our YouTube. Um, and that's all just different councils going through the project within the news sort of timing community news type updates, which are fantastic, I think. Very valuable. Other things to consider. Um, ensuring the council communications team and customer service are in touch with the project and working together to get the best leverage. So they won't always know the results, um, but they might. So just making sure that all the teams are sort of working together to get the message across and it's not disjointed. Um, encourage any cheerleaders to spread the messages. So when talking to customers who have had a leak, encourage them to sign up to the portal and tell their friends about it and share their personal experience on social media. So we found good examples of that where the local community have posted about savings that they've had um, or leaks that have been picked up, alerts that have been set off that have sort of saved them lots of money. So it's definitely better coming from them than from the council sometimes and that generates some positive energy about the project and water use in general. Um, so yeah, using individuals to create hype, nominating for awards based on results, mentioned that before, create case studies to share with the community. So whether that's the water project as a whole or individual sort of savings. So say at the local pool, um, a leak was found discussing it or at a smaller property, what was found and how it was overcome that might be useful for the community to know that information as well. So creating case studies for them to read and learn. And hosting information days and addressed each segment of the community. So I don't know if this would tag on to other sort of council activities, but if, if some time can be spent doing little presentations on water use and how to go through the customer portal, that would probably be a good um, a good way to get the message across um, on a one-on-one -on -one level. Um, so yeah, we're here to help here at Taggle. Um, we're here to sort of assist with any questions that you might have, bounce ideas off, provide any imagery and information, proofread your content, um, and assist with award nominations. Um, we have found that content that's come in hasn't necessarily been correct. Um, some of the terminology, terminology might be dated. Um, we've been doing this now for 10 years or so, so some of the new updates might not be relevant to some of the older information that you might be looking at in the examples, for example, in that folder that I've got. So it's always good for us to have a read of that before it goes out and make sure that it's relevant to your project. Um, but yes, happy to help anywhere along the lines at all. Um, so I've got my personal email address there. Being the marketing manager, please feel free to get in touch with me or go through your normal support channels, which is yeah, support at tackle.com.au and they'll forward anything to me. Um, yes, we have question time. Maybe. Yeah, questions. Do you have any any other thoughts, ideas that anyone would like to throw out? I will allow people to talk, um, but I'll turn everyone on mute. Um, but happy to get a bit of a discussion going here to see if anyone's had any particular successes, things that haven't worked so well, any questions. 
Here's a few rolling in. So from Darren, thanks, Siobhan. Is there examples of using the Qualys slash MyWater platform to send comms out and linking those back to central records and billing systems? This is getting a little bit beyond me. Can I tag a friend, Mark Halliwell, to answer that one? Uh, thanks, Siobhan. Um, I'm a bit like you. I don't actually know the answer to that. Uh, it's perhaps a question, Darren, that we'll have to take on notice and uh, get back to you. I mean, the customer portal, the front end can be used for messages. There's a few different blocks um, that we can put information in that you could feed through to the customers, but um, not that would be linked to the central records that I know of. We'd have to... Yeah, get back to that. I'll put a note to get in touch. Um, Mark, so when's the best to start looking at a communications plan? I'd say to do that right at the start. Um, at least putting it in place, you might not need to act too much, but in the initial stages, allowing your community to see what what your what the plans are, why you need it, then it won't come as such a shock when the rollout goes ahead, um, sort of buttering up, I guess, if that makes sense. So having those initial initial communications can be beneficial, um, and then having a general plan. You might only create the information down the track, but so that all the parties involved know what to expect, doing it quite early can be helpful. Um, and with the latest sort of rollouts, we have been creating working groups for that, um, where I've been talking sort of with the communications team. But for those who've been around for a little bit longer, we might need to work on sort of down the lines how we can help with that too. Cool. Hope that answers that one. And then to Bree. We're about to roll out, but to commercial customers only at this stage have found, have others found commercial customers engaging? Um, yes, commercial being, it can, it depends on who it is and who's like how close to the owners it is. Quite often with commercial, if it can, because of the layers of management, you might not be able to reach those who really worry about it but say for your farmers for example they're a lot more engaged with it um business owners though they do if they've got big leaks on their properties that's when they tend to become engaged so they might may not engage before that point but if you can convince them through the data that yeah that they have a leak then and they might drag their heels and be like no we're fine but if you've got the data you can show them the information then that's when you might get better engagement from them. Um, but yeah, it's coming up with a plan to target them, I guess, and how to get to the right level of management who might be worried about the accounts and how much water is being spent on water, how much money is being spent on water. So does that answer your question, Bree? Um, Dan, do your customers have DMAs, and if yes, have you performed water balancing? Um, Mark, can I call a friend again? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> um, a number of our customers have started working on DMAs. Uh, from my point of view, none of them has really taken to it with, with real gusto to uh, properly get involved in non-revenue water management through the setting up of DMAs and monitoring water in, water out. Uh, Bundaberg is one that comes to mind that I know is setting it up and I believe Mackay is on the way but I don't know the extent to how far they've got 
Uh, but from our point of view, it's definitely something we recommend. It, uh, the facilities are all there. It really just means that the council has to look at putting in the right district meters and properly defining their DMAs and, and getting themselves organized. Uh, Non-revenue water is a major issue for water utilities around the country. And this is a primary means of uh, trying to tackle the problem. Okay, thanks, Mark. Hope that answers your question, Dan. Um, <laughs> Mark's given me a little question to fill in. Um, is it a good idea to involve local media and newspapers? Yes, definitely. You want them on your side. Um, if they're not on your side, it can be quite challenging and they might be putting messages out that aren't what you like. So definitely involving the media, trying to educate them of what the what the project is about and what the benefits are likely to be, um, they're more likely to be on your side. But um, And you definitely, with the, the evening news, want to be getting in there. But yeah, news articles, especially when shared, can, can sort of spread different information. And if you've got control of that, it's definitely a positive. Do you have anything else to add to your question, Mark? Uh, well, since you ask, um, I have come across some councils who have taken to making short videos for use on their own YouTube channels. Um, <clears throat> Mackay is one that comes rapidly to mind. They have a council TV website, uh, which eventually shows up on YouTube. And their promotion of what they have been doing has been, been very influential in educating their local population, uh, so much so that people ended up ringing the council saying, when, when can I get my smart meter? Uh, you know, it put uh, a positive view on what the council was doing and got the community engaged. So it's definitely something I would recommend. Yeah. And you did a great video with Logan. Um, that was pretty good. So if you need our assistance in that, um, you being customers, um, we're more than happy to help with that too. So the video with Logan had Mark, um, as well as the council speaking. So that was good having both sides. Um, great. Um, from Darren, what percentage of customers are signing up to the portals and what are the barriers? Um, the percentages are still a lot lower than what we would like. Um, Mark, can you? Sure. Yeah. Um, don't expect everyone in the community to sign up, Darren. Uh, it's something that you know people get excited about for about five minutes when they see it first, uh, and they might sign up. Uh, at best, uh, we've seen about 25% of uh, water users or consumers or ratepayers uh, signing up for the customer portal, uh, which you know by itself might look like a small number, but the advantages to the council of having even that number of people signing up uh, are considerable, particularly in the area of uh, maintaining currency, if you like, of their contact details. Very often with ratings and notices and water bills, all you have for a customer is their address. And so with the customer portal, it gives you an opportunity to pick up on perhaps their current email address, their current mobile phone number, um, which if you have an issue later down the track where you need to contact them urgently, uh, you at least have those details. So uh, it's something that needs to be worked on from the council's point of view. I, again, quoting Mackay, they have regular um, uh, campaigns to get people to sign up. At one point in time, they were giving away, I believe it was a Harley Davidson mo motorcycle um, for people to go into a draw to uh, you know, win this prize if they'd signed up for the portal. So much value did they put in the portal. I'm not suggesting that every council should do that, uh, but it should become a part of an ongoing campaign of awareness within the community, uh, because the more people you get on there, the more chances you have to communicate with them, to educate them, and overall to reduce water consumption in the community, if that's what your goal is. I would probably add to that as well, um, in terms of getting customers to sign up, when, when they have an issue, that's most likely when you're able to get them to sign up. So having that 
really pushing the message when issues arise. So if their bills are high, um, they're experiencing troubles, then that's, that's definitely a good time to start targeting them with the messages to sign up, um, as well as just the general getting everybody on board to, to help monitor their water. Cool. Um, and from then, what's the average payback time on your smart meter installations? Um, the only one I officially know is Narrabri, which was six months, um, as they were very proud of that one. Um, Mark, do you know any of the others or the average payback time? I'm with you, Siobhan. I know about the Narrabri one because, as you say, they were very pleased with themselves. Um, I haven't had any feedback from any of the other councils that I'm aware of uh, with their payback periods. Everyone has a different business case that they're trying to achieve and the, the payback period, as important as it is, it tends to vary from case to case. Um, if anyone's willing to offer this information, <laughs> we would love to hear about it. Um, but yeah, the only one we're, we're aware of is the, the narrow bry, um, which they were quite high at with their non-revenue order, so it was quite a quick turnaround to being able to solve some of the issues. Um, I don't know, is, is that something that we could put in the chat window if anyone from the councils is willing to put forward how long they sort of estimate their payback period was? Um, that would be kind of interesting to know. Otherwise, any other questions? Again, I am really open to discussing these sort of things and what the, what the challenges might be. Um, a lot of the time we're only guessing what they are um, and how we can help. So if we know what, you're, what troubles you're experiencing, we're more than happy to sort of work on that and improve as we go along. Um, so please do. We've got a Taggle user group on LinkedIn, which we haven't been very good at using, but um, please feel free to contact me to get the login if you haven't joined that already um, or putting any ideas or suggestions in there, um, asking any questions so that other um, customers can answer. Um, that would be a great sort of shared community space to sort of learn how to, how to drive this customer engagement side of the project and any sort of side of the project really. That user group is, is a forum for your use. Any other questions? Do you have anything else to add, Mark? Uh, no, Siobhan, I think you've done a great job. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I think it's probably time to wrap it up. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Again, feel free to email me. Um, come through my email address or through inquiries at Taggle or the normal support um, channels and we'll get back to you. Um, but yes, thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next month. If you have any suggestions for topics that you would like to see, please forward them through. If you would like to do a presentation, because we'd like to get a few more customers on board for that, please feel free to offer your suggestion too. That would be great. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Thanks Damien. Thanks, Siobhan. All right, thank you. Thank you.